Welcome everyone to our Journey of Riches, the interview series with the authors, and I'm here with Aminda Sumiadi, and uh, we just launched a book together, A Journey of Riches, Creating Resilience. Aminda, she is a, uh, works, works with people in the mental health sector, uh, helping them create resilience. Uh, great to uh, be chatting with you today, Aminda. Good morning. How are you? How are you yeah, doing? It's, it's afternoon here. I'm in Thailand, so... <laughs> <laughs> well, UK is freezing and it's about to snow soon, they say. All right. That's kind of exciting. <laughs> have a white Christmas maybe. Mm, never seems to happen at, on Christmas Day, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. Never say never, right? And uh, it's so. this is so awesome to be chatting with you because what a lot of people don't know is we went to high school together. And uh, Gorakin High on the Central Coast in New South Wales, about an hour and a half north of Sydney. And uh, I'm in Thailand. You're in, like, near London. And uh, here we are collaborating on a book together. I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> it's very exciting. You know, years ago in drama class together, you were, like, this amazing, talented singer and performer and just a natural I mean, if I would have said to you, we're going to write a book together one day, I mean, you would have looked at me like I was a weirdo. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Never thought I would have done something like this. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so awesome. And it's uh, it's been an honour and a privilege to publish your story, Aminda. And um, I know what I got, got out of your chapter. What do you hope people, uh, readers, get from your, your chapter? Well... Uh, as you know, John, because we've spoken a lot over the years, uh, I've really toyed with the fact that I wanted to get my story out there at some point. And yeah. um, the reason for that is I think it was very therapeutic for myself uh, and I and it's nice to read back on my own journey, but also creating resilience was something I didn't even know I was doing and it was happening naturally throughout my life until I realised what I was doing, I was able to really use my tools and, and help myself. And so basically what I would like to do with this book is hope that even if it's just one person I touched to the heart, um, one person maybe I help on a really blue day or in their own journey, this is what I really want to achieve out of it. So the main focus for me, I guess, in joining with you is one it is something i'd like to do in the future but i i think right now it was more for me getting my story out there and, and really hoping that i can help someone else that's going through the same journey as myself mm. yeah i can appreciate that that was the motivation uh, before for me writing my first chapter and i'm curious i mean it's this is just a perfect the perfect theme for you, creating resilience, and it's something that you've had to do in your own life, and now you actually, that's what you do for a living. You help people create resilience in their life for real. What I do is a, as a support worker, I, I we basically we, we help people in recovery. Uh, our main saying for the, it's a charity I work for, um, and our main saying is uh, making recovery reality, basically. So, um, but in everything that we do for them, a lot of it is about creating resilience because they come to us because they need that support to to find the tools to help them to, you know, to create ways to get through life daily and then eventually you know that that daily struggle becomes you know it never goes away because a lot of them are, are suffering from severe mental health or trauma but it's mm -hmm. about learning to like myself learning to live with that and and learning how to get out of those down days quicker yeah so yeah. that that's what i do basically i really enjoy it yeah that's awesome it's so great and um have you like always had a yearning towards like helping other people or what Where's the inspiration come from, do you feel? Is it just from your own adversity? I think because of uh, everything I went through, I did kind of drop in and out of a lot of jobs because I think when, you're, when you've had to create resilience and fight a daily survival and getting through any type of traumas, sometimes you, you're not really aware of what your true calling is because you're so busy with having to deal with all these negative, uh, you know, negative things around you and getting through them. And I think 
for me, I w- I'd started sort of the pro- – I had therapy for quite a long time. Um, yeah. And it, that was a major part of my journey. And I feel mm. for me – Starting that therapy and just really finding who I was and 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 what I really enjoyed, I kind of fell into mental health. And um, once I did, I realised how much it was my calling. And the fact that I wasn't looking for it, it just kind of, I can't really explain it, it just came to me, the job role. I was kind of asked to to join the industry because of the way I was as a person, because of how I communicated with other people. Um, and then once I was there, I realised that this is my passion. And now, I mean, I've been in mental health now for, you know, coming on to 10 years now. So um, it, it, I know it's for me because I was always someone that changed jobs constantly. I just didn't feel like it was the right thing. But in regards to helping people, I think that's always been a, a part of me, probably too much sometimes. <laughs> but I guess it's about balance and um, and I enjoy what I do and it's my passion and sometimes it's it's tough hearing some of the stories and some of the cases are very extreme and sometimes very confrontational, um, mm. but I love it. And every time I finish my day, I feel like I've woken up and I've actually made a difference to someone's life, which to me is the most amazing feeling. What you it basically makes your adversity worthwhile in a lot of ways when you can actually trans trans. I think it's uh, necessary. I think there's just a slight delay, but um, mm, yeah, yes, it it's so inspiring. Yeah, that as I said, that that was what I wanted, and I really do hope. I'm I'm never going to know who I might have touched or helped, and that's not. It's not that I want to know anyway. I just yeah. that's not the reason I've done it. For me, it's just you know, it, it's just knowing that maybe I've done it and it will be someone I'd, I've never met before probably and will never meet, but I know that it will help someone, which is the most important thing for me. Yeah, awesome. And, and what advice do you have um, for someone that has been uh, abused, abused uh, maybe by a family member or um, what sort of advice do you have for them? You know, should they keep quiet? Should they speak up? Um, what's your advice on that? Because it can be quite a tricky situation, you know. I mean, I've had a lot of um, trauma work. I think it, it really depends. I think it's when you're ready and you will know, like you'll really know when you're ready for it. I mean, if you're at a point where your mental health is quite affected by it, and, um, you know, you're really struggling on a day-to-day basis and little things are really messing with you, that's not the right time to deal with it. And with trauma work, which I learned through the process and in the role that I do, is we don't always have to dig deep and take all the layers off into what the actual trauma is. It's if we know ourselves that it's there, we can either deal with in a way where we learn, we do the first step of trauma where we learn all the grounding work and how to get us to a better place because ultimately, you know, it's happened, it's in the past, we can't change it. And it's about, I guess, doing that process of going through it and accepting what happened. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to let it out. It can be something that you deal on your own and within yourself. Everyone's so very different. And they do say with trauma work, you can either be someone like myself where I had to get it all out. For me, expressing it was part of my journey. For me, writing it down and actually letting everyone know out there what happened to me mm-hmm. is what I needed to do personally. But there are other people out there that will never want to let anyone else know about it, but they just need to deal with it themselves. So you can just do the first step of trauma where you just learn the grounding tools, learn how to actually, you know, because it's like a scar, I guess. And I said this in, in my chapter where it's a scar that's all always there and the therapy is putting a plaster on it and once in a while that plaster will come off and I'm going to have to put a new plaster on but it's when it actually comes off of dealing with it where it doesn't affect your life in a negative way and you're able to get through it straight away because you're not going to be able to stop those triggers you can recondition your mind and that takes a lot of work but those triggers will always be there, but it's just making sure those dr- triggers don't affect your life negatively anymore. And that's that's a process that we've all got to make. And I think it's just accepting that we all deal with it in a different time limit and a different way. And we're going to have bad days. That's natural. It's just 
making sure that those bad days, we quickly snap out of it. And that's where we've got to learn the right tools to do that. Yeah, nice. I like it. I like it. I, I think that, that that makes sense too, that you'll know when it's, you know, when you're ready to confront it and strong enough to deal with the aftermath, I guess. Um, and it, obviously there's different ways of dealing with it as well. You, yeah. I mean, you you share a lot in your chapter and, um, you know, your parents are Indonesian. Your parents are Indian, right? Uh, my dad. father's Indonesian and my mother's Australian. Yeah, okay. So um, being biracial, you experienced a little bit of racism at school and discrimination? Yes, I did. And a lot of the time I kept that quite quiet actually, but I think for me... It's bizarre because I think, you know, I really do want to say that you, you to encourage that if you are being bullied or, you know, whether you're a child or an adult that, you know, you should report it and let people know. But at the same time, part of it, I guess, was a resilience that I'd created to deal with it in my own way. Um, yeah. And for me, I guess, uh, as I got older, I learned to kind of confront any type of bullies that I had, but there was a while that I just would keep it inside and not tell anyone it was happening to me. It was tough because obviously being Australian born, as far as I'm concerned, I am Australian and anyone that's close to me knows that. But yeah. because of my look, especially back then, maybe not so much now. I mean, you know what what the Central Coast was like that as well. It was a bit because we were so isolated in a way from the city life, um, everything was a little bit slower in regards to catching up to different <laughs> is okay kind of thing. So, yeah, 100%. 100%. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, I did. I did experience it and it was tough. Uh, it was a tough thing to have to deal with. Also, when I was dealing with so much personally in my inner mm -hmm. self and in my family life. Yeah. Your advice, if you know, if you're being bullied about your your race and and some receiving racial uh, slurs, uh, to to report it, that's your advice. Yeah, yeah, that that is definitely definitely what I feel because um, I I didn't do it enough back then, and I did it when I was older. Um, mm -hmm. I was actually bizarrely, I I did bump into a bully. I had once, and he didn't remember mm -hmm. me, and okay. that was a real lesson for me because it was very random i was in the city in a nightclub and he came yeah. up to me and actually was trying to obviously you know buy me a drink kind of thing and i <laughs> recognized him straight away because you don't forget your bullies you know and it was years uh -huh. ago but he affected my life so negatively in the way he treated me that i never forgot mm -hmm. him ever and he had wow. a different hairstyle, was an adult now, and I knew it was him. As soon as he came over, I knew it was him, but I didn't say anything. And he was all interested in me and chatting to me, and I let it go. I just let him talk to me, all being nice and everything, and I just said to him, you don't remember me, do you? And uh -huh. he was looking at me, I and he go, I said, you really don't remember me? And he didn't, and, then I, and I said, look at me closely. And then it suddenly hit him, and I just went, I said, do you know how you affected my life? And and I said, and you didn't even remember me the first time you met me just now. I said, um, and, and, and I think that really dawned on me that often we give too much to them as well. Like I, yeah. I thought about what he did to me for such a long time on a regular basis, but he didn't, he completely forgotten that memory. And so I also read, realized I was feeding that too much because yeah. to him, it didn't make a difference, but in my life it did. And um, But it was nice to confront him because I told him how he made me feel and he did apologise, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. You know, you can't you can't change the past, but, you know, he can be different in the future and so that's good. Yeah. From yeah, well, that was the thing. I, I said to him, thank you for apologising. I said, it doesn't change what happened, but I do appreciate that you apologised to me. So, Yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. That's interesting. You got to confront the bully later on. Nice. <laughs> well, he's probably dealing with his own insecurities as well. You know, obviously, it doesn't make it right, um, but I think yeah. it's important to you know forgive and show some empathy and and be the bigger person. 
Yeah, it was quite bizarre, though. I did think it was kind of faked at play there because there was no way I would have thought. I'd never been to that venue before. I'd only been there once, and it was just uh-huh. – it was absolutely full. So it was quite bizarre that it happened. <laughs> it is, yeah, very bizarre. But uh, yeah, it's just the synchronicities of life, I guess. <laughs> um, so what, what does uh, creating resilience mean to you? I mean, for me, it is, it was, it's, it's funny actually, because when I was, when I'd been kind of writing bits and bobs about my life, it, when you actually came to me with that topic, I realized that most of my story was actually about creating resilience and, mm-hmm. and adapting, I guess, my journey in life around that was actually really helpful because it gave me kind of like a, um, a topic to relate it to and it was it was actually quite easy to do because I think creating resilience for me was I had to start it from a very young age so I didn't realize it was something I was actually doing and mm-hmm. then once I kind of even though I didn't have a name for it resilience I was using those tools to get myself through life and I was kind of getting better at using those tools, finding new ways. And I guess resilience for me is you can't change, you know, things that have happened to you and you can't change things that might be going to happen to you except for what you can do is is really work on those tools to to strengthen your resilience to it and how you respond to it mm-hmm. and, um, and how you deal with it afterwards. So I think resilience is a really really important thing to develop especially if you've been through a lot of trauma and things like that because yes you know you can cry and feel those emotions but for your well-being you need to also create that resilience to actually fight those feelings deal with those feelings crying is something that people don't find easy as well like not everyone can just cry so facing those emotions um it all comes to play with it Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah, it's not easy to, to cry, but it's such a, a relief when you just let it all out and let it go, you know. It, it takes a lot of strength and character rather than well, hanging I mean, on. It's a thing I say to a lot of people is that, you know, if I cry, I'm actually a big crier. A lot of people said that. But then a lot of people have also said to me that I'm one of the strongest people they've ever met. So. Yeah. I feel crying is not a weakness. It's an actual strength to be able to deal with such an extreme emotion and and feel, actually feel, you know, that that people I think often feel that if you cry you're weak, but I don't see that at all. Like crying is a strength and it doesn't well, mean you're sad. It's just letting an emotion out, you know. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it's far worse to suppress it. You know what I mean? That's it's kind of the opposite. Crying is the strength and suppressing it is the weakness. You, you're mm-hmm. basically, you're, you're torturing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess with people I work with as well, I mean, I'm not a, a qualified professional. You know, I've done certain courses that I have to do in the role I'm in and in the last role that I was in. But to be honest with you, I feel like my role is about, a lot of it is about lived experience. So, for people I support, I, I need to touch base into my lived experience, which which can be quite confronting for a lot of people for, to do that in their job role, having to bring in right. their own personal traumas. Um, but this is where I know the resilience I've developed is quite amazing now because I'm able to talk about my experiences with complete strangers, you know, um, and I'm, I'm able, I still have to be able to put those boundaries in because it's not all about me but at the same time find the balance where they can relate to me. And so I do have to share some of my personal experiences and it helps other people to create resilience in themselves because we kind of go through the process together. You know, I discuss what's worked with me and um, and then I help them. I help them. Mm-hmm. One of the things is creating resilience, help them find the tools because all the tools are different for every one of us. We go through it and we try different ways. If that doesn't work, let's find another way. You know, yeah. it's um, so a lot of them walk out sometimes having a big cry, often laughing, but the yeah. response I have had is they feel like 
they can't pinpoint what I've what I've done to help them and support them, but they say that when they walk out, sometimes what I do is more than any professional has ever done for them. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I get you show empathy, you know, and you're you've been there, and so you can show compassion for what they've been through. And your story doesn't own you, so you're able to communicate effectively and articulate what you went through, so they don't feel so alone. You know what mm. I mean? Because so often we go through adversity, especially really you know heinous things uh you know like some of the things you went through that we feel like we're the only ones that have gone through it so when someone shares openly uh and you know it's their story isn't holding them back or stopping them from living a full life then that's inspiring that's liberating for someone that's you know at the other end of the scale and their stories are owning them and they feel like a victim you know it's mm-hmm. you're empowered and they probably feel powerless so mm. that's the way yeah. i see it anyway yeah because i did a lot of work in uh yeah um, mission australia and i did coaching nlp and things like that and that's what i found uh, yeah. when you can empathize with people and um, own your story and express it then actually they feel empowered and that they're not the only one that's gone through it yeah well watch this space because i really hope to write some more um, when the time is right, and hopefully collaborate with you again. <laughs> and no, that would be um, awesome. That would be a pleasure. And, yeah, and I and I also hope to do more as a as a mentor. You know, I don't like to say the word coach, but I just feel like I'm very genuine in what I want to do for people, and so. I don't know what I'm going to do in the future. As I say, watch this space, but I do know there's more to come from me. Yeah, that's awesome. And um, what what is your um, greatest advert? Like, what's the biggest challenge you went through that gave you the most resilience? Do you know what? It was something I never expected. Is okay. that um, for me? It wasn't actually a physical thing that I experienced. For me, right. it was coming to a realization that. What I thought was something quite a small thing compared to the trauma I dealt with on a physical and emotional, mental way was dealing with the way that some of my loved ones responded to what happened to me. They weren't the people that directly did anything to me, but I realised how much almost, it's a very strong word here, but almost how much hate I'd built up inside for them not pre kind of protecting me or supporting me and I think that was the hardest thing to deal with because it was for years that I dealt with that and the reason it was years is I actually didn't realize it was something that was stopping me until Uh I had therapy I realized that a massive big issue for me was going through the relationships I had with my parents and as and I guess for a long time because they were a parent I'm a parent myself now so for me I understand uh-huh. you don't get a book. You don't get a, a book that tells you what's the right and wrong way. If we have our own traumas, which my parents did, we can, you know, without knowing, move that trauma to our children and also in uh-huh. our responses to trauma. And because both my parents were conditioned by their own traumas, it affected me when I went through a trauma and it was about that forgiveness and that was really hard to deal with because there was a part of me that didn't want to forgive them but I also realised in my therapy that it was something I really had to overcome to move on and I didn't realise how much of a grudge I had to my parents. I really didn't realise and because they weren't someone that hurt me directly, I guess I didn't really click as to how much hurt they actually did give me by not doing what a parent should do. But now I am a parent, I understand that we can make these mistakes. But for many years, I didn't understand that. You know, I I just saw it as you shouldn't have done what you did, you should have protected me. And I'm not saying what happened was wrong on how they reacted to it. But it was about understanding why they did what they did and mm. then moving on from it. You know, also confronting them. I didn't get really the responses I wanted from them, but mm-hmm. I was able to express my feelings and move on, basically. Mm. So I think that was the biggest challenge for me. Wow. Okay. 
Mm. That's inspiring. I mean, that that's tough. That's tough, <laughs> you know. Mm. That's, yeah. So, so, would you? What was so? What was the benefit of of going through that? Like, said so you got the resilience, some str- uh, inner strength. I think the benefit for me was that I felt that there's a point where a lot of people might disagree with this, but my personal opinion is there is a point where you are a victim and then you become a survivor, but part of that process is not you can get to a point sometimes where you enable yourself to still be a victim. And so for me, going through all those processes, it was about, about, becoming a survivor basically and i think there's a big difference between a victim and a survivor on how you feel externally and how you feel about yourself and i had to really grow as a person learn what triggered me you know what i had to face a lot of um i wouldn't say negative things about myself but i face a lot of things that i had to work on Mm -hmm. about myself and that is quite confronting when you have to kind of, I I got to a point in my journey where I was, the resilience was so strong and I'd gone through so much and really, you know, developed myself that the the next stage was to face what I had to do better for myself because ultimately you do all that stuff but you still need to love yourself and if there's things that you don't love about yourself, you know, how can you put that love out to the world? Yeah, that's, that makes sense. and. There's a lot of gifts there too. You had to really work on yourself and, and love yourself. And uh, so that's a beautiful gift to, to get from the experience. And Because I think sometimes sometimes as a victim, if, you know, obviously it's not, it's never a victim's fault what happens to them at all. Yeah. But no. sometimes as a victim, if you don't go through those processes, you almost abuse yourself in a way, if that makes sense, because you're not loving yourself. And you have to start thinking of yourself as a survivor because if you always think of yourself as a victim, you'll always be that victim. And it's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy at all, you know, and that you'll slip back in and out of these feelings about yourself. But I know, I think anyone that's had trauma or no, even people that have had no trauma or a little bit of trauma, you know, whatever trauma they've had, it's still something that all of us struggle on a daily basis, but it's about growing as a person. So if you're not doing that, you're not actually growing anyway. Good point. Very good point. Um, would you uh, would you go back and change anything? Uh, as in, what do you mean? Like in myself, in my in my trauma? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like if you could change anything in your past, what would you change? People sometimes find this quite shocking when I say this, but I wouldn't change anything. And the yeah. reason is, is that you can't. <laughs> and two. <laughs> Hypothetically. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but two, the reason, I, the reason I wouldn't is that I actually, I don't think I'd be the person I, I, I might be wrong because obviously I, I don't know 100%, but I do feel everything that I've experienced in my life negatively and positively, as I said, it never should have happened to me, like, uh, you know, and it never should happen to anyone out there. But when I look back at it, the person I am today, like I I really, really like the person I am, you know, my all my negative and positive traits, you know. I like how I feel. I like how I feel others. Like I have this like basic gut feeling on people you know, I have this way of really seeing deep inside someone that I hardly know, like in my job role. And um, I don't think I'd have that if I hadn't been through the traumas I was in. I just don't because I think all the feelings I've had to experience in quite a severe way has made me more compassionate. And uh I have thought about that a lot, John, which is quite bizarre you've mentioned that because I have thought about it and I'm like, oh, I wish it didn't, you know, at times I like, wish it didn't happen oh, for obvious reasons. But then other times I think, you know what, like I wonder if I'd be as nice of a person as I am now. Interesting. Interesting. Like, you, as I guess it's a bit like yourself. Like do you think back sometimes and think anything you've gone through in your life, would you be doing what you're doing now and releasing all these books, you know? 
I, I wouldn't change a thing, no, because, you know, out of adversity can come so much growth. Um, you know, it's it's after the storm that the rainbow appears. You know, yeah. you, you don't have the rainbow without the storm and the clouds, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. You don't see that there's always stars in the sky. 24-7 yeah. stars in the sky. You only see it when it's, when it's dark. And so the darkness yeah. brings out the light, and I feel the two go hand in hand. And from my own experience, what I was doing was stuck in victimhood and was like, well, if only the X, Y, Z didn't happen, then I would be okay. And I feel that that is a mistake. It certainly was a mistake for, for me. I feel it keeps you tra trapped in victimhood. And um, mm. you, know, you mm. can the person stopping you from re living an amazing life is yourself. And yeah. once I get the realization of that, then mm. why would I change anything? It's you know the good there's there's good and bad in everything, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's intertwined. And I feel that you know you can get so much from negative, you know, heinous experiences that you wouldn't wish on anyone. Um, but mm. without those experiences, certainly from my perspective, and I know you, that's what you're saying as well, you wouldn't. You wouldn't be the person today. You wouldn't be so as kind-hearted or considerate, or as you probably wouldn't be working in mental health. You know what oh. I mean? Because you went through that, and mm. um, and so I feel everything serves a purpose. And yeah, I do, and I, I think I, I look at it. I look at yeah. yeah, and I look at it as a gift now as well. It's like I need to do something with this now. Do you know what I mean? Because it's not an easy thing to do to do what we both have done, get through, become a survivor, not a victim, work through those things, trying to help others, loving ourselves and and putting that message out there. And so for me, I know there's more I have to give because I feel like now this is part of what I'm meant to do in this lifetime. Mm, that's powerful. That's a powerful realisation. Mm. Breathe that in. That's that's beautiful. Mm. <laughs> That's a that's a beautiful paradigm shift right there. <laughs> awesome. Well, it's been great chatting with you, Amanda. Do you have like any last words that you'd like to share? Um, thank you. Thank you to you for letting me be part of it. And um, I guess look at me, I'm see I'm getting all teary eyed. <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. This is strength. <laughs> Um, just to say that I hope I hope it touches someone. I hope I mean obviously I haven't read yet the other authors' chapters, and hopefully we touch many many people's hearts. And uh, that's it, really. <laughs> Beautiful, I love it. Perfectly said, and you know you've shared a lot. And um, we'll put the link uh, to your website if it's available. Yeah, I know you're working on a website. Also, yeah. definitely the, the copy of our book. We'll we'll post that link. Um, down below and also uh, like comment and share so and, and su subscribe uh, to our channel and you get more r real authentic shares from the journey of riches book series once again thanks for spending some time with me and minda thank you very much enjoy your day <laughs>